ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sunset's Life, Be Exceptional in Bristol. Um, can I start, start by introducing myself? I'm Richard Heaton, Permanent Secretary uh, in the Cabinet Office. Um, I want to say a huge thank you um, for the welcome that we had from the City of Bristol. Uh, in particular, thank you to the Lord Mayor uh, and to the Royal Marines. Um, I tell you, Gates Hill was a great occasion uh, on Monday. London, London was fantastic yesterday, but the start that we had today, the welcome was just tremendous. Um, so huge, huge thank you. It felt fantastic. And it's fantastic to be in such an amazing such an amazing venue as this. Backstage, I tell you, there's a list of people who appeared on the stage, and there's Steve Coogan and Black Sabbath and all sorts. So um, let's hope we can live up to that. A um, big thank you to the City of Bristol. It's fantastic to be here. Um, uh, and just on the Royal Marines theme, um, just a reminder that um, there are civil servants serving as reservists uh, with um, the armed forces. Uh, and uh, several parts of the armed forces, uh, the maritime uh, lot are down here. Civil service as reservists is a fantastic thing. It's fantastic for the armed services. It's fantastic for the civil service. It's brilliantly characteristic of the sort of people that become civil servants. Not only do they do a job which is inspired by public service, but they do stuff for the public service in their spare time. So a big, big plug to those of you um, who aren't familiar with the work of the armed forces reservists. Have a look at the stands outside and get involved. It's a fantastic thing to do. So big thank you to Bristol. Now, what is, um, what is Be Exceptional all about? As I say, we've been doing it for, for three days. This is the first time we've done it outside London. I'm really, really pleased that we've got out of London to do it. Um, what is Be Exceptional all about? First of all, it is about um, the civil service that we all are part of and we all probably in different parts uh, love and admire. Uh, we've all got different relationships with the civil service. I've been a civil servant for uh, 22 years. Um, I've always been proud to call myself a civil servant. I've always been proud of the service. I've always been inspired by it, uh, impressed by it. I've been supported by it. I've been encouraged by it. Um, I've been frustrated by it, sure. But it's civil servants. Civil service are two words that have always filled me uh, with pride. Um, just to tell you a quick story from last Saturday uh, in London. There was a pride march throughout central London. And a bunch of civil servants in purple t-shirts uh, marching parading under the civil service banner. And that moved me for all sorts of reasons, partly because um, they were visible um, gay and lesbian civil servants in the Pride March, but they were wearing a civil service t-shirt, which hasn't happened before. And it's just, it was just fantastic to see people walking through the streets of London um, saying we're proud to be civil servants, proud of what we do. Uh, that was a really, really great moment. So this is about the civil servants, your civil service, our civil service, the civil service that we love. The United Kingdom civil service, the service that the Prime Minister and the DPM said in that video clip, um, the country needs and depends on. Uh, it's a fantastic <coughs> to be a part of. Uh, and as I said, I've always been inspired by it, and I'm now, um, I feel I'm privileged and humbled to be part of its collective leadership. It's also about this day, be exceptional, it's about um, a civil service which is great, um, which is capable of doing great things. Um, the work we do, you all know this, I know it, the work we do is really important. Uh, we do it well. We do it really well. Very often we do it quietly, uh, effectively, without much fuss. Um, often, every day, across the country, we are truly exceptional. Um, so, you know, there are civil servants keeping the country safe. There are civil servants administering justice, promoting Britain abroad, helping people into work, um, supporting people who are vulnerable or sick, protecting our countryside, supporting our industry, supporting our rural economy. Um, uh, understanding what makes Britain tick, understanding entrepreneurs, understanding our voluntary sector. Really, really important stuff. There are civil servants working at the border, uh, in prisons, in job centres, civil servants doing brilliant analysis, superb analysis, civil servants commissioning and delivering, as Jonathan said on that clip, world-class projects. No bigger or more successful projects than the London Olympics last year. Uh, really successful. Um, and look, we, all of us, throughout the country are talented people, uh, doing great, sometimes, let's face it, unglamorous things, um, but driven by a kind of collective feel for the public service that isn't always you know, loud and visibly passionate. Sometimes it's just characterised by a sort of unassuming, quiet uh, commitment. Um, and it is, as I said, characteristic of the civil service that we go beyond the day job, uh, and there are civil service, not just reservists, but there are volunteers. There's a voluntary stand outside, we don't have a look at that. Um, we are the sort of people who really, really add to society. And the reason I've said all that at length is um, actually partly because I don't think we say it often enough. Uh, we don't often say just how great the civil service is, and it's true, and it's important. 
but also because uh, for the reasons that the Prime Minister and the DPM said in that video, the challenges we face are pretty extraordinary. Um, and if I didn't think the civil service between us was up to the challenge, um, I certainly wouldn't be, wouldn't be standing here. Um, I think it is. I think we are up to the challenge. Um, because there's something about um, the challenges that we face, there's something about this moment in time, this particular set of challenges, that paradoxically is the thing that kind of puts wind into our sails. So uh, I don't need to recite the challenges. The challenges are um, deficit reduction. Uh, we will become smaller. We need to spend less on public services. We will be, we will continue to be a smaller civil service. Challenge number one. Challenge number two, the public demand better services, more convenient services. Um, we need to stimulate growth in the economy. Um, we need to rebalance the economy. Now that is an awesome set of challenges. Um, and our response uh, has to reflect the urgency of the challenge. And as I say, it is because of the urgency um, that the challenge becomes so exciting because it means we are forced to do and think of different uh, things. So it's a really exciting time, I think, to be exploring what a different future civil service might look like. So you will see during the day, and you will see outside in the stands, you'll see some of the things, I think, that contain the clue as to how we are going to respond to the crisis. You will see, um, you'll see stuff about digital. Digital is not just a pipe dream, it's not something we talk about, it's something we plan to do and we are starting to deliver. Truly, truly digital services, not just end to end services for our customers, but a kind of digital workplace that makes sense for us as civil servants. Um, we are going to be fantastic at buying things, fantastic at buying things, razor sharp on providing value for the taxpayer. Uh, we're going to be in the civil service hungry for new ideas because we need new ideas. We can't deliver against those challenges with just the existing stock. We need new ideas. So, ideas like open policy making, um, big data. Uh, social investment, uh, mutualisation, different ways of delivering services that aren't just in the public sector or in the private sector, but somewhere in between the two. Innovative ways of responding to the voluntary sector, working with the voluntary sector, working with the private sector. In the old days, we used to work with the private sector as big companies, big monopoly contracts, um, and we are the privatised or outsourced, and it was pretty binary, it wasn't very great service or value for money. Our understanding of the private sector is going to be different. Uh, working with SMEs, Making our procurement process work for SMEs, that sort of thing, that sort of innovation, a different way of working, uh, is going to be the characteristic uh, for us. We're going to be one civil service. And that doesn't mean we're all necessarily going to kind of, um, uh, it's not a single employer thing, it's just the idea of, you know, we are collectively uh, delivering against this challenge and we need to think of how we can do things together rather than simply um, being trapped in departmental silos. So a single civil service, really passionate about what we can do, passionate about skills, passionate about doing things differently. Um, uh, the skills in the civil reform plan, the skills that we think we are lacking, um, digital skills, commercial skills, procurement skills, change management, project management. Um, but also we're going to rely heavily on existing professional skills, <coughs> analytical support, legal support. We're going to be civil service that's characterised by really, really great professionalism, as well as, not a dirty word, it's really, really great generalism uh, as well. So it's going to be a place where uh, you would come for a career, um, it's a place where you might come mid-career for a spell because you know this is the place where you're going to learn and develop. It's the sort of place you might come at the beginning of your career, move out, come back in. It's the sort of place where it's a, it's a destination of choice uh, for generations, not just in this hall, but generations to come. We had an extraordinary session in London yesterday, which I don't think we're repeating today, so let me tell you about it. Uh, a group of 16, 17-year-olds who have done the National Citizen Service debating with a group of our streamers about what the civil service might look and feel like in the future. We've got to be able to attract talent, not just the talent as I say in this room, but the talent of generations to come. What sort of employer do we need to be to get the best people continually in the civil service? One of the things the 16 year olds told us is that we don't uh, tell our story well enough, that we're not out there, people don't understand the civil service. And interestingly, they made the connection between disengagement with the political process and the disengagement with civil services and employers. So there's work to do there because we've got a great story to tell and we will continue to be a great employer attracting amongst the best talent in the country. So, um, I would invite you to really enjoy this day, um, soak up these themes of uh, reform and innovation and excellence and skills. I hope you'll be inspired. Um, find the most exceptional example here, either from what someone says on the stage or from what you see outside in one of the schools. Find the most exceptional example of civil service in action and share about it, share it, talk about it, take it back to your teams, Tweet about it, <coughs> be exceptional, tweet about it. Um, have fun, 
meet people you don't know, meet colleagues, network, probably all of that, network, um, heckle people, get involved, um, uh, find a moment to write on the creative wall, things that you've seen, pledges that you're going to take away, um, tweet the best bits, the exceptions, the hashtag, sign up for the randomised coffee trial, if you don't know what randomised coffee trial is, find out, sign up for speed mentoring, um, there are fantastic stores outside, I actually had any had time to look at one of them, um, but it was great, uh, this is still says local, um, doing a uh, academy at the next university in August for AAs to HAs. If this is anything like the DWP Summer School, which I knew very well when I was at DWP, it's a fantastic opportunity um, uh, to learn and to be stimulated by colleagues. So that's a plug for the next university. It's also a local uh, academy in August, but there are great stores outside. So be inspired. Um, and a challenge from me, if I may, a challenge to you, um, find a quiet moment, sometime this morning or this afternoon, um, to reflect on what you've seen or heard. Um, ask what it means uh, for you, uh, for the team, for the team that uh, you're a member of, or maybe the team that you lead, uh, what it means for your organisation, uh, where does your organisation fall short on some things we're talking about, some of the skills, digital perhaps, commercial procurement perhaps, um, change management. Um, so ask what it means for you. Uh, how will you help us, the civil service collectively, because believe me this is a collective effort, how will you help us meet the challenges uh, that we face? Will you, be, will you be open to new ideas? Are we going to be ahead of the curve? Or are we going to be always catching up as a service? Will you be ahead of the curve? Um, James Pennell, who spoke to us yesterday, used this phrase about um, think of where the ice hockey phrase, think of where the puck is going to be, not where the puck is. Are we going to be ahead of the curve, capturing the new ideas, harvesting the new ideas, or are we going to be behind? What will you do to help us get there? What will you do to help us create a unified exceptional civil service. How will you personally improve? So that's, that's the challenge. And then please, um, at the end of the day, as I say, have a fantastic day. Um, uh, leave this place, um, go back home, um, aiming to be as good as the most exceptional thing you've seen or heard about today. Aiming to be as good as the most exceptional thing you've heard about. Because this is a fantastic challenge um, that the Prime Minister and DPM uh, the ministers on the cliff articulated for us. We, between us, are more than capable of rising to it. We have done fantastic things. We are a succeeding organisation, not a failing organisation, but we need to be really, really, really ahead of the game uh, to meet these challenges and do the best for Britain. So, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. Because, um, because we don't have an MC, let me just tell you what's going to happen next. At 11 o'clock, my Pencil colleague John Thompson is going to lead a Q&A session. Uh, he's going to address you, he's going to give you his thoughts about civil service transformation, and then there's going to be a question and answer session. So I think we've got a bit of a break until 11 o'clock. Um, so go and enjoy some amazing stories and we'll stay home.